Hey all you groovy people, this is going to be my spoiler review for Deadpool and Wolverine. There's so much to talk about, there's a lot of good stuff and a lot of bad stuff, but before we get into this, please be sure to like and subscribe to Reverb Comics. You do not want to miss out on our awesome content. Now let's get into this. Now starting off with the great stuff, I really liked how there was a nice emotional arc for Deadpool. I really like how this movie was about him reconciling with his old girlfriend Vanessa. It really humanized the character really nicely, especially since Deadpool as a character is somebody who fires off a lot of jokes and really doesn't take anything seriously. It really helped us connect with the character and that's something that I really admired about this movie. Also, I really loved the Easter eggs. In the first part of this movie, we got to see Deadpool travel from universe to universe to find a version of Wolverine that could help him. It was really cool to see the creative team pay homage to classic X-Men stories. So as we all know, we got to see a brief snippet of Wolverine fighting the Hulk. Well, almost fighting the Hulk. We also got to see a comic accurate Wolverine. In other words, we got to see a Wolverine that was only 5'5", five five, which was pretty hilarious to see. And this was my favorite Easter egg. I love how we got to see an Age of Apocalypse Wolverine. It was super 80s, it was super retro, and I just loved how they paid homage to that era of the comics. It kind of reminded me of X-Men 97 a bit. Also, I love how Henry Cavill came on to make a cameo as the Wolverine. I think it's really cool now that he's collaborating now with Marvel. I think he very much deserves this considering what happened to him at DC. It kind of sucks that he lost that Superman role under those ridiculous circumstances, but hey, what can you do? Also, the actors that appeared in this movie were pretty fantastic. I was genuinely surprised that Wesley Snipes came back as his version of the Blade. That was pretty cool to see. That was something that I definitely did not expect. It was really nice to see Channing Tatum finally suit up as Gambit. Now, for those of you who don't know, he was actually set to star in a Gambit film, but unfortunately that creative project never got off the ground because they could never lock down a director. So for the longest time, he was due to play Gambit, but that creative project never came into fruition. So it was pretty cool to see him finally get to play that character. Also, I didn't think that Channing Tatum could have pulled off that Cajun accent, but he did a pretty good job. That's a, that's a pretty hard accent. The name's Gambit, on a me. Remember it. As we all know from the trailers, X-23 came back to help this Wolverine get back into action. The actress really killed it in her scenes, and it was pretty nice to see Jennifer Gardner return as Elektra. Now, this movie had a lot of great things going for it. Like I said, the comedy mostly worked pretty well, but there was a lot of times where it kind of fell flat. And this is where things really fell apart for me. I didn't like how this movie didn't take itself too seriously. I mean, it is Deadpool, he is a very comedic character, but I would have liked it if they took moments a lot more seriously, just so that we can feel the stakes a lot better. If you're constantly downplaying and discounting everything, then it's hard to get invested in the story. Now, everybody gave really fantastic performances. The actress who played Cassandra Nova was a really big standout performance in that film. She was my favorite actress out of pretty much everybody from Deadpool and Wolverine. Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds obviously killed it as the respective characters. It's hard to imagine anyone else as Deadpool and Wolverine at this point. I think the major thing I was really disappointed by was the fact that we didn't get to see more Fox X-Men characters. As we all know, we got to see Chris Evans reprise his role as the Human Torch. That was a pretty cool thing to see. I kind of expected that to happen, but I kind of didn't at the same time. That thing got spoiled for me a couple of hours before I saw the movie. That's what you get though, sometimes happens. But I'm genuinely surprised that they didn't ask Patrick Stewart or Ian McKellen to come back as Professor X or Magneto. I'm also surprised that they didn't ask any of the old X-Men actors from the early 2000s to come back and reprise their roles. I mean, Disney is a really big company, like they have a lot of money. I'm genuinely surprised that they didn't ask those actors to come back and play those characters. I'm really surprised that Pyro, out of all those characters, got to have a decent role. He got to help Agent Paradox with his schemes. In a way, he kind of had a bigger role than the Human Torch, which is kind of odd and unexpected. 
I would have liked it better if Hugh Jackman's Wolverine got a better story. So when Cassandra Nova got into his head, he revealed that he let the X-Men go on a mission and they basically got killed by humans. Now, personally, I didn't think that was a great moment in the film. Personally, I thought they were going to go the old man Logan route where Logan gets tricked into killing the X-Men. For those of you who don't know, Mysterio basically tricked Wolverine into killing his teammates. He made these illusions that made him think that all of his X-Men teammates were these supervillains. I think it would have made for a better redemption arc for Wolverine if they would have went that route. I didn't like how there wasn't this sequence that at least showed us how they died. It kind of sucks that the X-Men got this sort of send-off. It would have been a lot nicer if these old X-Men characters got a much bigger grandiose send-off. To be fair, there was a nice sequence in the end credits that showed you all the bloopers for the old X-Men Fox movies. It's kind of crazy to think that we're never going to see another Fox X-Men film ever again. I hope in some capacity those actors come back to reprise their respective characters in future Marvel projects. However, I wouldn't hold my breath. But all in all, this was a decent movie. The story was okay. The comedy was pretty good. There was a lot of dialogue and exposition. I definitely think that they should have cut that down a bit. I did get confused at times when it came to the villain's motivations. I didn't understand why Mr. Paradox wanted to destroy all these different timelines and universes. Also, I didn't understand why Cassandra Nova wanted to use that time device to basically become God. That didn't really make a lot of sense to me. I didn't really understand why those characters wanted to scheme so much and to destroy all those timelines and universes. I mean, people in the TVA, they don't even get paid, so... I, I don't understand why Mr. Paradox would want to do it. It's not like he'd get a promotion for it. Also, I get that Cassandra Nova is filled with hate and she's a cruel person, but I, I didn't understand why she just wanted to destroy some reality randomly. I think the movie kind of suffered from poor writing for the villains. It would have been nice to know why they did the things that they did. It would have been nice to know their motivations more. I definitely think they needed to be fleshed out. But all in all, it was a pretty decent Marvel movie. I don't think it was as good as X-Men 97, but still pretty decent nonetheless. They made a lot of jokes about how Marvel Phase 4 wasn't doing that great. They also made fun of the multiverse and how it was basically a lazy writing tool, for lack of a better word. It makes me think that they're not going to rely a lot on the multiverse going forward in the MCU, which is great. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness wasn't that great in my opinion. Some films really benefited from that multiverse writing tool, but I think we can all agree that the multiverse has been used as a pretty lazy cash grabbing tool, at least for the most part. Honestly, there was some good stuff and there was some bad stuff associated with this film. It made fun of itself a lot, so it definitely got away with a lot of things. I would have appreciated a lot more if there was some stakes and if Wolverine got a better redemption arc. But hey, not everything can be perfect. So it definitely has some good things going for it, but some not so great things going for it. All in all, I don't think it's my favorite Deadpool movie. I think the first Deadpool movie will always be my favorite one. I don't know how they did it, but the humor just really worked in that first film. For me personally, it's a little bit worse than the second Deadpool movie. But what do you think? Do you think Deadpool and Wolverine is a good MCU film? Do you think that Deadpool saved the MCU? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe to Reverb Comics so that you do not miss out on our awesome content. Stay groovy. Also, would it have killed them if they would have went with a longer Wolverine versus Sabretooth fight? I mean, that thing only lasted like five seconds. Just saying.